for the next couple weeks, we will be reminding all our listeners of our Mother's Day shout out. So we always say wine time is our mom cast. So we want to hype up the moms. This Mother's Day, we want to give you all the opportunity to shout out the moms in your life. Send us an audio clip or a message you want us to read out loud on the pod with a shout out for that special mom, whether it's your own mom, a mom friend, a mom teacher, or any other mom you want to show that love and appreciation to. And what we're going to do is put it all together for a special Mother's Day episode coming your way. Welcome to Wine Wine Time. Time. I'm Rachel. And I'm Heather. Where two moms will pour a drink, espresso, wine, cocktail, who knows, and tell you stories or complain about moms. You will get the good, inspirational, uplifting, encouraging, the badass, we all know a badass mom, and the crime, moms who have committed them and or survived them. This is Wine Wine Time. Time. The good, the badass, and and the the crime. crime. Hello. Hey, hey, Hello, hey, hey, wine hey. bucket. Our little and wine bucket besties. The wine shit time show. The wine shit time show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the wine shit time show. Um, for anyone who may be new here, welcome. And for anyone who's been here, welcome. But if this is your first time, What we bring to you each week is greatness, just pure epicness, (laughs) and it's all, it's all mom related, the good, the badass, and the crime, my dudes, my dudes. Um, today is a mom topic, and it was actually (laughs) requested to us, which is exciting. We want more requests. This was such a good request. I was like, that was such a good idea. Yeah, no, it's exciting. So if you guys want to hear something, I mean, it could be crime, it could be whatever, but if you have just a topic you want us to cover, throw that shit our way. We are ready for it. We are ready. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know why I just jumped right into it. That's not how we do things. So if you're new here, you would have never known that. <laughs> but Heather, what's up? What's up with you, girl? What is up with me? What is up with me? I... I'm so tired. I swear this wind is giving me so my wine today. It is windy AF here. Like okay. windy AF. I hate it because like you can hear it just like all through this old house. I feel like it like one of the walls is going to come down. And I swear it's like giving me a headache, just like the constant like whoosh 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 sound. So mm-hmm. I'm over it and I want this wind to stop. And that is, that is my, you know, what I'm putting out in the universe today That's for the wind to stop. No about. more wind. What about you? I'm over here complaining about wind and you're over there like dealing with like snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll whine about that. I'll whine about the weather today. So what I will whine about when it comes to our weather. So here we are going through a, a cold front, whatever it is, uh, Freeze, snow, sleet, ice, meh, whatever, right? And I, so last night, I want to say it was probably like 5 o'clock, I get this call that's like, the schools are closing down prepared, it's an NDI day, da 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 And I'm like, what? Like, I, I didn't even look at the weather, so I didn't know that's supposed, or like all of a sudden, hey, Benny, in the background. I know. <laughs> Everyone who cannot see this, Benny, her cat is in the frame. <laughs> I love it. Um, but yes, so they canceled school. So I was super frustrated about that. Also, you know, here we are in this cold ass area. I don't remember school being canceled in California. That's just not something that happened. We did mm-hmm. not have that luxury. <laughs> but mm-hmm. the point, the, the thing I was going to whine about is I woke up. It looks fine outside. There's, I mean, there's no What's snow. That? There's ice. I can, I will, I will post the picture of the icicles coming down. So I understand the safety of driving with those sleek sure. road conditions sure. and that kind of a thing. But I just, I think that in my head as my first like NTI day out here, I was like expecting 
like a snowstorm. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So then I was kind of let down. I was like, <laughs> but it's okay. That's fine. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Here we are. So you've got winds. I've got icicles. Icicles, icicles. coming from my balcony. That's um, crazy. Yeah, my birds didn't get to eat today. I didn't go out no, there. I did not yeah. go out there. And maybe this is the day I need to go out there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't those ice could die. be dangerous. I was like, you I'm not going out there. <laughs> I want something to that. whine about, not die about. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what's here. Um, I know you just said you were making yourself a tea. What are I'm you drinking? What kind nice of a tea? tea? It is like, so this is honestly the first tea that I ever drank. Like, ever. It's a vanilla chai tea, and it's, like, mm. my all-time favorite. I was never a tea drinker, right? But then in high school, I don't know if you remember Miss Miller. She, um, we, ha I'm pretty sure I have her, like, first period, right? So um, we would come in, and she would always have, like, a little tea thing, and she'd be like, you guys should get some tea. And I, I didn't drink tea, but she had this tea, and I fell in love with it, and, like, I drink this tea all the time time shout out miss miller that's funny that's no hilarious. i don't even remember that name to be honest so apparently she's a math yeah. teacher what was i doing <laughs> um i'm actually drinking coffee i love that is a cute new mug i needed a yeah. large yeah i needed coffee today so here we are yeah. here we are and it's going to be awesome and it's going to be great and it's going to be wonderful <laughs> Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, anyways, whatever. We're past that. We're getting into it. Um, which today is going to be just us. Yeah. Bringing this episode. With some all different cool listener like perspectives, which I, I, I like. I like the listener love perspectives. It. Yeah. I love when our listeners write in. Our mm -hmm. friends, our listeners, our people, they're awesome. But today, what we are doing is this episode is all about the decision to have one uh, child, I almost said child, one child, a few kids, two kids, whatever, or no kids, okay? So mm -hmm. it is going to be from all of the different, you know, whatever. And the reason for this, like I said, she wrote in, she said, hey, can you bring this up? Because she has one. One mm. cute little boy. Cute little boy. Shout out to Rowan. Um, and she said she kind of goes back and forth where mm. she feels like she'll want another. But then at the same mm -hmm. time, she's like, do I or do I not? You mm -hmm. know? And then she wrote us because we are the all great knowing of all things. That we are. Here we are. We know everything. And I'm a single mom. Heather's a. Double mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. <A> double mom. <laughs> <laughs> you and make we me just... sound like a double stuffed Oreo. I'm like, wait, no, oh, <laughs> shut up. No. Um, so we're just gonna bring that just different stuff we found all over the internet, and we're gonna have a good time with it. And here we go. So first, I I'm just gonna start because this is who I am, and that's usually how it goes because I talk a lot. So when I was younger. I always thought I wanted so many children. I was over here like, give me all, give me all them kids, all them kids, mm -hmm. right? I at least wanted three, four, five. Like I wanted more. Mm. And sometimes I'm kind of like sad that I only have, because I have one who's mine. And she's That was my choice. That was my choice. And, and it goes with everything because... If you listen to our birthing episode story, if you listen to our postpartum story, if you listen to everything, right. if you listen to wine time, you will know why I have one kid. Um, but <laughs> it's just, there's a lot of background for that decision that I made. Um, sometimes I'm kind of like, man, maybe that would have been cool to have another. Other times I'm like, no, I'm absolutely fine. But with that said, I never had another, but her... Her, my daughter's dad, he has twin baby girls, and my boyfriend has three boys. So she is kind of right. surrounded with children when she right. gets to see them. So, and what about you, girl? I was kind of the same. I always thought <clears throat> I would have four. I was always like, yeah, I want four. I want, I always like, I had it in my head. I was like, I want a girl, and then I want 
twin boys and then I want another girl. And like oh, ever since I was little, I was like that's what I want. That's exactly what I'm getting. Like, you know, yeah. I was very out of so it. Funny. And then As if um, you can make that as if choice. like I could make that happen. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Um, and then um, you know, Zach and I got married. We waited a while to have kids and then it took us a while to get pregnant. We actually it took us a while to get pregnant. So, um, you know, when we first got pregnant, I was and and when we were first talking about it, I was like, Oh, three. I think we can do three. I think three sounds great. Um, and Zach was like two, just two. And it's funny because yeah. I come from two. It's just me and my brother. And I was saying three. Zach comes from three. He right. it has two older siblings, and he was like, no, two. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, whatever. And, you know, I kept saying three. He kept saying two, even after we had our first. And then, um, but we knew we at least wanted another. So started, you know, trying, having another, got another girl. And we were both very happy about that. We both were like, oh, it'd be, a, like, cool to have a boy. But both of us were like, we're we like that we have two little girls like very very happy right. and even after she was born into like two three months I was still like we could still have a third we could still have a third and then I got past the the newborn stage where they you know they they just eat sleep and poop and you're tired but it's it's manageable because like it's you know and then Eating started and this started and that started and, <laughs> and then I'm life like, and then life and then like you know I go back to work and then my yeah. postpartum starts hitting and I very quickly was like okay it's like like two I think two I think we're okay with two and yeah. and that's like that's where we're at and it's so funny because I have a friend who um she had a little girl and then they had another little girl like you know uh less than two years later um, and then she was like, I was the same way, you know, when, when her second was born, she's like, we can do three, we can do three, we can do three. And then she very quickly was like, "Never mind, I'm good. Um, so I think that you, I think there's a lot of people who have that where they go, oh, I want like, you know, a football team. And then they're like, "Never mind, I'm good with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And then there's people who are the other way too. There's people who are like, right. I want one and I'm done. And then they end up having, you know, four or five. And they're like, this is, you know, this is what I was meant to do or yeah. whatever. But sure. um, no, I'm, I'm incredibly happy with two. Every once in a while, especially, it's so funny because especially recently after my youngest turned one, I've been having like the like, we're never going to have, like, a baby baby again. You know, like, I'm never going to have You can a visit. <laughs> you can visit people's like, babies. I know. I was just like, that kind of makes me sad. And then Zach's like, right. what? And I was like, I mean, not that I actually, like, want to go through the all again. Like, I'm I'm not. But I'm just saying, like, I, I am going to miss having a baby baby, right? Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah that's, that's kind of mine. But... I'm I'm banking on my brother someday maybe having kids yeah. and then I can, Your I can turn. get all of the <laughs> yeah I can get all the newborn like cuddles yeah. in that way instead of me having to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, that's when you just become auntie to all your friends' kids exactly. because you are finished with it. <laughs> right, exactly. You are finished with it. It's funny when you were saying how you wanted a girl, then you wanted twin boys, and yeah. then you wanted another girl. I always wanted twin girls, and it's really funny because I always, I swear, I'm like, I wanted twin girls. I knew I wanted to name them Keely and Kylie. I was obsessed with it, and my ex-husband, he all of a sudden, like, comes. I remember him. He's like, hey, we need to talk. He shows up. We go out into my, my driveway. We're, like, sitting on the curb, and he's like, so... <laughs> My girlfriend's pregnant, and I'm like, okay, cool, you know. Maybe I already knew about the pregnancy, and he goes, but you're going to be mad. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I give no Fs. And he goes, he's pregnant with twins. Because he knew I wanted twins. Yeah. So then I did. I felt some sort of salty. I was yeah. like, no, she doesn't get to have the twins. And I was like, well, they better be boys. Of course they come out they're girls. They're girls. So yeah. they're twin girls. Then, then... He comes in, which I would like to say, oh, here's what I'm whining about today. He didn't like any of the names that I came up with for our daughter, which right. in his defense, I am the worst person at naming anything. I'm always <laughs> over here. Like when I first got my dog, I named her Lady Mormont. <laughs> like 
<laughs> I'm just hilarious. I wanted to name Kenzie from like Game of Thrones as well. Like she was going to be Khaleesi or Daenerys or whatever. <laughs> like I'm coming up with all these like names. And he's like, no, absolutely not. I tried mixing my mom and Kristen's. I tried calling her Crystalline yeah. with both names, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And he's like, stop it, stop it, stop it. I liked the K, so he came up with Kenzie. I said, I'm fine with that, whatever. Well, all of a sudden, because Keely and Kylie was what I wanted, he comes in right. and he tells me he's naming his kids Bailey and Brindley. And I'm like, you don't get to do these things. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, it was ironic to say the least, which is yeah, for sure. pretty funny. Pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so now we are just going to go back and forth and throw a bunch of different things your way on pros and cons of one pros and cons of multiples and the decision to not have any, if that's the decision yeah. you want to make, which is totally a thousand percent. Okay. As well. So what you want to do? You want to start? You want to start with I pros? Can start. I can Go start. Ahead, Go ahead. Or maybe you should. Cause it's about okay. having. Cause one I have kid. one. But yeah. I've got so many cons of having one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm no. Like, okay. Well, then I'll start. No, no, no. That's a good point. I'll start. I'll start. <clears throat> so. Um, Rachel did some research, found some pros, cons, having only one child. Um, so, you know, parents, just like our listener who requested this topic, just like many of the moms and parents that we know, like, I literally just had a conversation with a coworker about this who has, um, like a nine month old and him and his wife are starting to decide, like, do we have more than one? is just having one good is should we do two should we do more um right. so it's a hard decision to make but um you know there's a lot of the the benefits of just having one right obviously the money aspect there's money. a lot of money that goes into kids right, right. <laughs> um so there's a lot of reasons why so we're gonna get into that okay so um reasons benefits to having a single child one child um if you only have one child obviously that child gets all of your attention all of your support um this can be very beneficial to a child right in general that child's support system is strong because they they're not I hate to use the word sharing, but yeah, they're not sharing the parent's attention or focus right. with another sibling. Yeah. Um, so that that is going to carry through with a kid um, their whole life. You know, you you always hear about, sorry, Rachel, like middle child syndrome or <laughs> like, she raises her hand. I'm not um, <laughs> or like, you know, I, I, I came from a big family. My parents didn't have time to really pay attention to all of us. So, you know, and, and they, they do see that kids from single, like if they are our only child, they do have higher self-confidence and belief in their own abilities because they, you know, they yeah. were that only child the parent was able to um, focus on them. There's also like a very strong bond that happens, and Rachel, you can attest to this, right? Between a single child and their parent, when you know it's that only them, um, and that's not to say that if you if you have more than one kid or you are you know from siblings that you're not going to have a great bond with your parent. It really allow like the situation in and of itself allows for that to happen because it's right. just the one kid. Yep. Um, they often say that uh, only child is very independent compared to other children, which totally makes sense, right? They they have a lot of time to themselves, by themselves, so they learn how to figure things out by themselves. So that independent play where they're not relying on a sibling to play with them, you know, they're very self-motivated. They, they spent a lot of their days you know, not by themselves, they, you know, they have their parents with them, but not necessarily with like a peer right next to them. So they, they've learned to be very independent mm -hmm. um, and they like to do things independently. So there's um, a preference for pursuing solo activities. So, you know, they, they understand like, okay, I, you know, I'll go to dinner by myself. I'll go on a vacation by myself. I'll, right. you know, think, do things like this. They, they, um, they also said that 
you know, they're more comfortable with um, like singular activities like that don't require multiple people. So, you know, reading, playing instrument, you know, that kind of thing yeah. um, they're more comfortable with because they're by themselves. Um, and they do say that if it's a single child, uh, they're more mature than their peers. Um, and I think that there's arguments both for and against this. Obviously, like, you know, you, you could, being by yourself, you could learn to be independent and grow up rather quickly, right? So, um, you know, you can be doing your own chores. You could be, you know, but you can also say this about an eldest child. <laughs> they, yeah. You know, they could mature a lot more quickly than their peers if they're charged with taking care of their, their younger siblings and stuff. But um, you know, I, I do see this with my eldest child. She, and obviously their time will tell, but she was, especially because of COVID, we had so much attention focused on her and I swear, and I'm not just like, you know, bragging here, but maybe I am. I swear this, her language abilities, her maturity levels, like the way that she holds herself is in my opinion advanced for her right. age right and so and i that also i think has something to do not just with her having been an only child for the two years that she was an only child but the way that the you know as a parent that you're you're treating them not like an adult but you're not babying them you know and and so she she's i mean She's very mature for her age, and I and I see that. I also have seen that with only children before, where they're mature. They can hold conversation with adults. They don't feel awkward around adults or older people because that's who they spend their time with. They don't spend their right. time with peers their own age, right? So, um, and it is said too that they may have a better ability um, for making friends because they they kind of have that inherent need to do that, right? They're yeah, more they gotta open go out of their to way step- too. Exactly. They have to go out of their way to make friends. They have to go out of their way to, you know, be at the playground and walk up to someone because they don't have a built-in, you know, peer. They don't have a built-in right. person. Um, so they, you know, they'll go out of their way to to make that effort. So there's a lot of good things about, and you know, they they do say there's a lot of statistics that show that you know, kids that come from an only child home. They're, you know, successful. They're great. They have a lot of, like I said, independence about them. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. (laughs) Right. We'll talk about the bad things. (laughs) I'll talk about some cons with with only children. You can talk about the cons there. That I can can personally (laughs) see, you know, here and there. And I can agree with so many things. And obviously, this is all situational not every right. one thing is gonna be a hundred percent so don't come for me people right but and one like of the I said, and like you said it a lot also depends on a the parent and b like kenzie yeah she's like you said she's an only child but she has other situations too where she's not so like you said it's very situational right. it definitely depends yep do 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 So some of the either cons or disadvantages of having just one, and it's really funny because, I mean, before we start talking about from a child's perspective, I'm going to talk about from a dating perspective. (laughs) I feel like I can always tell when someone is an only child or, you know. Yeah. Yeah, an only child. And it's funny because after my ex, I was like, I will never date an only child again. Like you can just tell, you could just help. Anyways, that gets to my to my first point. I've never thought about that. That is so funny. I don't. I think I've always dated people with siblings. I mean, like I really haven't dated in my life, but the main people I've had relationships with come from from sibling. Like, so I never have really like been with like an only child person. That's interesting. I have. Um, and we'll get there. But so one of the things is just the tendency to to be either spoiled or entitled, right? Yeah. So these children are getting all of your time, all of your attention, all of your right. everything, and your love, your affection, which 
can be such an amazing thing, right? right? But at the same time, if someone feels that the world revolves around them, which your right. kids, your world does revolve around your kids. 100%. But yeah. it should never get to the point where your child has that attitude that comes along with it, feeling like it has to be their way or no way, right? Yeah. And I feel like you see that in only children. Um, another it's a very thing... fine line. Sorry, just really quick. No, I go feel ahead. like because like I talked about it. It's a very li- fine line between like the self confidence and it turning into entitlement, and like right. that's a very fine line to like be at. So yeah. I totally yeah, you can totally see it going one way or yeah. the other for sure. And that kind of goes into the the next thing on this list of development of either arrogance mm-hmm. and like just a negative self-esteem, positive and negative in a way, but it's like the, what is the right like word? Just this child feeling like their sense of importance right. is different and not being able to understand the difference of just their God, it's so hard. I feel bad because right now I'm, I feel like I'm really talking shit about her as my only no! child. Because <laughs> I'm like, like I said, I can see so many, so many things. And it's, um, anyway, <laughs> uh, the fear of stepping out of their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. They're used to you. They're right. used to being with you. And, and yes, how you said with the pros of them being able to go out and make new friends and stuff because they're put in that situation that's a lot on them as well. And, and they, right. that is a learned ability. But yeah. if the child is not allowed to fail or falter, because that's what the kind of pressure in a sense has been put mm. on them, they're going to stay in their comfort zone and feel like yeah. I have yeah. to be this way. Again, um, it's like, like you said, like, it's a very fine line. Like you can see it going oh, I don't have anyone at home, so I have no problems, like, going out and being like, hey, want to be my friend, but then you also see it the other way, like, oh, I don't right. have siblings at home, so I don't want to talk. Like, you definitely see it going yeah. one way or another. Yep. Yeah. And that's why you can see, like, only children, when something happens, not having that kind of, like, ability to... I shouldn't say ability. They have the ability, but the the desire to figure it out on their own, get up and keep yeah. going because they want to kind of cling to their parents or have them or, to kind of help them through that situation. Sure. Um, but, you know, I, I'm still like that. And I'm not an only child. <laughs> Mommy, where are you at? <laughs> um, Mom, I'm at the doctor's office. What's my You have to come here? to every appointment with me ever. <laughs> Just carrying the load of parental expectations. Yeah. And it's funny, um, this this thing, I'm just going to read it, how they had wrote it, by experience by many talented children out there, the pressure of parental expectations is quite real. And it's funny because I, we sh- I should have had a list right here of just, I want to say, so many great actors and actresses just coming, like, are single yeah. children because right. they they were – not only given more and maybe that maybe that comes with it they were able to have more opportunity and give it to them because they only had one and they didn't have to spread out their time but Mm -hmm. they these children feel the need to go above and beyond and to earn their parents love by kind of perfecting every single for sure uh, date of their life you know in a way um next is the chance of being rebellious I don't know that life <laughs> I didn't do that as a... <laughs> but I guess single children can um and there's a strong chance that they they will rebel as a single yeah. child and I think that that's just they didn't have that opportunity to do so with their with their siblings probably in home where it's right. like going against each other type thing so now it's right. their time to go out and do that in a in a different way yeah, the responsibility of looking after older parents right. and just being the only child having to have know that that is going to be on them, right. at, you know, later in life, which all the children should look after their parents, everyone. 
go look after right. your parents. <laughs> yeah. All of us are children, right, of somebody. But, yeah, just, you know, if you have siblings, you guys kind of take that weight on together. And but as that, a single yeah. child, you you think of that and maybe that kind of what is being sacrificed or, you know, what you're going to either – change in your life, not, not right. necessarily give up, but how your decisions later on might affect or be affected by being the only child to for sure. later look after your yeah, family. And for your sure. So those are just few cons of, of being an only, an only child. And, with, and as we those... go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say with that being said it's so funny because like as you're reading this and like as I was reading through the you know the pros of it you can really see though how depending on I mean yeah you're not gonna be able to change like you know however like the vast majority of that child's structure in that there's only one kid at home but I think in a lot of ways, and it you're making me think of Kinsey, like, it's almost like she has, she can have the best of both worlds with her situation, right? Because, like, yes, like, you know, it's it's just her, but then she also has, you know, siblings that, that aren't there 24-7, but she still has that option to, you know, right. to have that, right? And, and um, the other thing I keep thinking of is even if you are, like, a parent of an only child, you know, there are cousins, there are play dates, there are daycares, there are, you know, friends with right. other kids. And I think there's definite ways to, to really balance those pros and cons um, without feeling like I must have another kid because I don't want yeah. my child to end up with all of these you know, entitlement like, and whatever exactly. this list is, right? I think there's a way that you yeah. can work in you know, these other things quite easily without having to have a second kid to deal with. Right. The, as I, as I went through that, obviously I can see so many of, of both of those lists. Right. And ultimately like what comes out of it, like right now in this moment is yes, a hundred percent. I find myself wanting as, as a single ch uh, mother of a one single child is Wanting to keep her as involved as possible because I want that interaction yeah, for her, right? Exactly. So I'm constantly trying to find ways to either put her in a new program or make sure that she's having someone to hang out with, whether it's the neighbors, whether it's me inviting someone over, whether it's a program, whatever it may be, I am constantly trying to keep her involved for that reason. Also, right. I do see her maturity level, which I have from birth, from birth. But her maturity yeah. level and just her ability to do so many things. And I know I know that comes with the fact that if I'm doing something, her sibling can't do it. Someone else, there's no one else here to do it. So if I'm doing something, she has to go do that herself or she's not going to get it. So she has right. learned that if she wants something, she needs to do it for herself at certain points, you know. Mm -hmm. And... So I see that as well. But, okay, so that's kind of our pros, cons on only children. Only All children. Right. So we'll get into now the kind of pros of having more than one. And I, I mean, I'm new, obviously, to the, <clears throat> to the um, life of more than one, right? Well, I, I mean, I got a year in, but, you know, relatively A year in, new. but you are. A child but of, I'm also exactly, exactly. I'm also yeah. like a sibling <clears throat> right like a so sibling. um one of the pros of having more than one children with siblings tend to be less self-centered so we talked about this as one of the potential you know disadvantages of having only one is right. you know the self-centeredness and it's true that I mean it's funny because like I have conversations with Evie every day where, you know, it's like, okay, but like she goes and steals a toy from her sister. Right. You need to understand now that like, it's not just you in this house and you know, it's your sister's, you know, you need to consider your sister's feelings. And I mean, this is true of any kid, whether they're a sibling or not, you know, but because they're growing up in an environment where, 
they, they, they are aware and have to be aware of other people, their ages. I think that's the other thing too, like their ages, um, feelings, they, you know, there's a tendency to be less self-centered. Um, another one, children with siblings are good at problem solving. And I feel like this one can go both ways. Like you said, like single, like only children, they can be very independent, right? But um, I think a thing, a really good thing that comes with having siblings in terms of problem solving is that social problem solving. So it is, like, that is exactly what I was going to say is that is yeah. the part that I instantly thought of with the problem solving because- exactly. You, you learn that you have to work together. You have to communicate your needs. You have to talk to each other. And that is something that, well, when I talk about the other thing, you have an issue with, you know? Like, if yeah. you cannot talk to each other about what you need, how to get through something, that's a problem. And that exactly. starts in the home, yeah. obviously, exactly. but that starts early. And that's one of the, I would say, one of the biggest benefits in, that I I'm always like, should I have a second? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I try to problem sure. solve with her, though. So. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is, like like we said before, you know, there's ways to make up for this in different ways other than having a second kid. But, you know, you can tell, like you said, it's funny, I've never thought about it in terms of dating. But when, like, in a workplace, if you've ever tried to do group projects and, you know, oh, yeah. if you've ever, yeah. you can totally tell if someone grew up with sibling-like people because yeah. they're the people who will jump in and say, okay, like as a group, like what do we need to do to solve this problem? Right. And then there are people who are just like, mm, whatever. It you is know? the difference so of what are we going to do rather than, well, yeah. I'm going to do this. You yeah. know, there is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, another one, built-in playmates. So I cannot wait for the day. I mean, it's, it's sort of getting there, but obviously Tempe's only one. So like her play is obviously very different. But, like, I can't wait for the day where I can just be, like, you two go outside, play with each other. <laughs> mom needs, like, 20 minutes. Like, yeah, I mom can't wants wait to sit here and read a book. <laughs> no, I'm going to sit here. Um, well, like, I think about it all the time growing up. Like, I mean, there were so many days, right, where me and my brother would get home from school. And we would just, like, we would watch TV together. We would play cards together. Right. We would do this for at least an hour before, like, dinner. And our parents didn't have to worry about it. So, like, I'm very excited for that day. I can't wait for that to come. Um, and it's true. Like, I, I even see it even though, you know, they, they're not old enough. When I go to, like, if, when my nieces and nephews come over, like, it, even though there's more kids, it usually still only takes, like, one parent to be in the room. And the other parents can go off because they have each other to, you know, like, interact with. Yeah. And you're basically just there to make sure no one's, you know physically harming each other kind right. of thing, right? You're here um, for the either way too loud or the complete <laughs> silence. Exactly. <laughs> Those are the things. Exactly. <laughs> the worst the worst noise ever, complete silence. Um, siblings also teach comforting skills. So it's, I almost cried the first time that Tempe, she was upset about something, like something dropped something, and Evie runs over and goes, it's okay, and starts patting her back. Yeah. Like, like the same thing you do. Yeah. Like, the same yeah. thing I do with Evie. And I go, it's okay, Evie. Like, and I was like, oh, my God. It's like, oh, my God. And it's the sweetest okay. thing. And obviously, they learn that very early from just, like, the modeling. Like, they see you doing it to their sibling, right? So they do it to you or to their sibling as well. It's really sweet. Really sweet. Love it. Um, they, having um, siblings, you provide your children with a new role in life. So, it's funny because I feel like we've talked about this before. Like, you know, you're a wife, you're a mother, you're a woman, but you also want to be your own self. So, like, it it helps to have, you know, a dynamic kind of understanding and outlook on who you are as a person. So, you know, understanding that, like, I'm a daughter, but I'm also a sister. And kind of the role that you take on as a sister or as a right. brother or as a sibling. Um, it can help you... It future in life, like in your future, with like how maybe you adapt to certain situations, right? Or how you approach certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, siblings are good for the future. It's so funny because when I read this one, all I kept thinking of is so when we found out we were having another girl, 
we were both excited. We were both happy about that. But, like, I don't know what it's like to have a sister. Zach has a sister, but obviously, like, the dynamic between a brother and a sister is probably very different between a sister and a sister. So I was asking a lot of people who were it, who had sisters, like, what was it like? And the, the main consistent consensus was they're going to be best friends, and then they're going to hit, like, middle school age, and they're just going to hate each other. From, like, yeah. middle school to high school, they're just going to hate each other. They're right. not going to talk to each other. They're going to argue about clothes and this and that. And then they'll go off go to like college basically in like at once they're kind of like more out of the house then they'll be back to being best friends in their adult years right. and I'm like so can I handle like the in between is gonna be like a really hard thing right um you know but it it's nice like I think about it all the time like you know push comes to shove no I don't talk to my brother every day but I know that if I called him that's just like a built in. I don't even have to worry about anything. I know that my brother would be there for me, right? So that's really good having that support system, you know, and not saying you can't yeah. have that from friends. Right. But um, you know, that's that's yeah, just a sure. built in one that you've known since childhood. So Yeah. Um, another one <clears throat> It said that, and it's funny, you'll have to, to kind of speak of this. It says people with siblings go through divorce less often. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I think I think kind of what you said where, you know, it goes back to that one we talked about before where it was like they're better at problem solving because yeah. they grew up in a house trying to learning how to communicate with other people, right? It it makes it easier. And then if you think about like an only child, they grew up being an only child. Let's say they stayed an only child in their parents' home until they got married. Let's say they never lived by themselves, really. Right. Or, you know, lived with a roommate, and then now all of a sudden they're in a home where they're sharing all responsibility with another person. Like, that's a major, you know, shakeup in their regular day-to-day -day dynamics. So you can see how that could lead to a lot of issues with your, you know, significant other. Um, we We kind of... I just, I just typed in because I was like, I want to find a statistic on that or whatever. And yeah, what is it? What is it? The first thing that pops up, I, I didn't find a statistic, but the first thing that pops up is, do only children have a higher divorce rate? Only children are more likely to divorce. Yes. Yes. So, for sure. Yes. So, <laughs> keep going. Sorry. <laughs> um, siblings can lean on each other. I mean, I think we kind of said that already. It's, it's the reason why I think it's, it comes out this way is because you have, and again, not saying that you can't get this from, you know, close friends or cousins or whatever, but siblings, you live in the same house, you have so much of your shared life experience mm -hmm. and growing up in the same way with the same dynamics, with the same, you know, perspectives that it, when you can talk to a sibling about that, it's real, it's a lot easier you to relate. Someone. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. You can relate to them. That's exactly it. Um, Real relative relatives relate <laughs> <laughs> in more than one way um the second and the third time around is easier I don't know about this one I don't know about that one <laughs> I don't know about this one I'm gonna say yeah. that the having to it was easier in a way in that there was nothing super unexpected you know, the first time she gets a diaper rash, the first time she throws up, the first time, you know, this happens. Like, okay, we've been through all that before, so it's less of a, like, a shock or whatever, but your time is now split, you right. know? And so, like, that can be very difficult. So I don't know about easier. Yes, in certain aspects it is, but in others it's obviously way freaking harder. That's funny. Um. And then the last one that this <laughs> this website has, which I don't know about, is it says it get, you get your money's worth. Two kids. The I'm way that thinking... the way that I took that was <laughs> like you you have items and you have certain things already for yeah. those children, and you yeah. know what I mean. And it's like depending oh, yeah. if you had a girl, you could have stuff already there. You don't have right. to go if it's certain play we're items. We're using cribs. We're reusing right. changing tables. Yeah. We're reusing this. Like, obviously, because we have two girls, all the hand-me-downs are yeah. still getting hand-me-downed. 
Right. Um, That's the only way I took that because I was like, um, I know. no. <laughs> um, because, yeah, because I will tell you that our daycare bill is definitely twice as much, yeah. which is a lot. That's on my con <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the cons. Let's do yeah, it. Let's cons. go into the cons. So uh, cons. First of all, delivery. You go through yeah. it once. This is me. You go through it once. You don't want to go through it again. <laughs> there ain't no other way. You know, like yeah. I'm done here. But that it's easier delivery wise the second time around that's generally but like delivery the just in general thumb, is like but in that. general you have to deliver yet another child yes it may be yes. easier than the first time that you did it sure my, right. in my still, experience it was still. but i was still <laughs> i have to fucking deliver another yeah. child right now this yeah. is gonna suck like no 100 yeah. percent. it's not great <laughs> next is just you know buying everything diapers yeah if you're doing formula, clothes, whatever, just spending money on the second child. Because now you're not only spending money on that second child, you still have that first child you're still exactly. spending money on. So, yes, I, when you, you know, the the money, what was it? The, get your money's worth. No. You are going to be spending money the rest of your life, and now it's times two. And times four two. Times I three, swear four times to God, <laughs> we went to Costco, and a pack of diapers – a pack of pull-ups, a pack of whole milk, because the baby's not on whole milk, and a pack of 2% oh, no, no, milk no. for Evie. 100 bucks. Boom. Gone. Yeah. Right there. Hi. Like, yep. what the hell? <laughs> yes, yeah. No, thank you. Um, and just having to do everything over again. So we talk yeah. about delivery. We talk about spending money. We talk about changing diapers. Getting spit up, a, spit up on again, you know, yeah. all of those things, having to do it over again. And sometimes as a parent of multiples, you do it kind of back to back. So it's like oh, yeah. that, that time period is only like a few years. Sometimes you if wait that... and then all of a sudden, 10 years later, you have another and you have to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just yep. everything round two, um, two times the homework. Two times the schoolwork, <laughs> two times the extracurriculars, two times the, you know, anything you are doing now, if, if, and not all children want to do stuff, but it's like, if you have two, if you have three, if you have four, are they all playing soccer? Are they right. all going to dance? They're all coming right. home with homework. I mean, I don't yeah. even know if homework is a thing anymore, honestly. My kid doesn't come home with homework. <laughs> but if, if there's projects, if there's things, if there's school yeah. events. Are you going to yeah. be able to go to all four of those events the same night? I remember my mom running around wild when it was back to school night. And it's like, I got to be in this class at this time, this class in this time, yeah. this class in this time. Boom, boom, boom. You know. Um, so just all of that extra. Um, cluttering your house. Just you have more kids. You will have more things. Oh my God, maybe yeah. you are a minimalist listening to this and you're like, well, you can figure it out and put them in. Then teach me your ways because this yeah. house. <laughs> Come on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have one and I'm pissed. <laughs> I swear yeah. we moved into this house, right? With no kids. And I was like, yeah. there's so much room in here where we're not even feeling all the closets or cabinets. And now I, yeah. we're like bursting at the seams. It's ridiculous ridiculous the amount so of crap much. that these two teeny humans come with like 100 percent. yep the show the show um kids are expensive how you yes. were just talking about that shopping list kids are expensive from the from the things you have to buy right yeah. from the things you want to buy yep the things you want to do the things you have to do whatever it is and this is only right now yeah and each year it just, it, it's more and more and more. <laughs> and more and more and more, you know? God. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Just becoming a referee in the game mm -hmm. of life, um, wow. you know, having to be that person, like we said earlier again, if it's too loud or if it's too quiet, something is going on with those children and you better go over there and you better yeah. figure it out. <laughs> one might be choking the other one out. <laughs> that could be loud or quiet. <laughs> Um, yeah, a funny one on this list is never owning a two-door car. Oh, Just God. Seriously. The, fine, the finer things in life, if, if that's what you want, you, you're not going to get it in this situation. I'm not going to say you have to have the minivan, but it's convenient to have the minivan. <laughs> so, 
you you are gonna find that you are gonna get a mom car if you're having those multiples. It's uh, very true. It's a must, and it really lastly, is. It is a must. Yeah. Lastly, you're never sleeping again. Yeah. So that truth. I mean, I have one, and I hardly sleep. Kids in general, you'll never sleep. But if there's multiple, I wouldn't even know what to do. I it's... wouldn't know where to begin if she woke up. And she needed me to rub her legs back to sleep. My toddler wanted me to hold him and rock him while my baby needed to have food. How do you mothers do it? Props to you. You guys are miracle workers. <laughs> like, if it wasn't, no. Like, if it wasn't for my husband, I don't know. Like, like, oh my god. Oh yeah, gosh. I forgot. Like, sometimes there's like, another person. <laughs> sometimes, but sometimes, like, and so I just I like it's so true. Like last night, between the two of them, between both kids, five wake ups. Between the hours of nine and five, right. five wake ups between these two kids. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going, then he's going, then I'm going, then he's going. Like, no sleep, no sleep. It's, yeah. and, and same thing. It's like, Evie's, say her knee hurts. Okay, she's having growing pains. Tempe's just waking up. Like, what do you, like, right. it's just, yeah, yep. mess. 100%. <laughs> A hundred percent. And that's what gets us into the next category of just the decision to not have any. Right. The decision to say, no, kids are not, not for, for me. me. Yep. Yeah. That's not something, that's not the road I want to take for whatever reason it right. may be, which is right. totally fine. That's totally right. fine, you know? And it's, but that, so we've had our, our one kid, we've had our multiple kids. Now there's the parents who don't want any, right? And, you know, to have or not have children, that's everyone's right. You can make that choice. And For there sure. should never be any judgment or criticism, which that's unfortunate because I feel like some people do question friends and be like, when are you oh, going to have time. kids? When are mm-hmm. you going to have kids? I don't want And it's always a what win. Do you mean? You'll be such a good mom. You'll be I such, know. You know, oh, eventually you're going to want them. Eventually you're going to give in. How about you just let me live my life? You live know, live your life um, the way you want to live your life. Some people are just unable Some people are biologically not able or biologically not able, unable to have biological children, whatever words I'm trying to speak right now. Um, (laughs) There, there's so many factors, you know, maybe it's financially, they know they don't want to take that on. Maybe it's, they travel a lot. Maybe it's, you know, work, they're focused on work. Maybe they just, they don't want to, that's fine. Right. And that could be a single person's idea choice it could be a couple's choice either way they could have very fulfilling lives which is perfectly grand so go ahead so you know it's it's interesting because it like you said like it's a decision that when people make these and i have friends who have they they decided they weren't gonna have kids the guy went and he got a vasectomy and the doctor's like, you don't have kids? And he's like, no. And he's like, and like, I've heard yeah. that doctors won't even do it if you right. say, no, I have no kids because there's yeah. this societal pressure or whatever to have it. But your life, your choice, like whatever. So yeah. um, they, and they don't make the decision lightly. Like the people that I know who decided not to have kids, they went back and forth for years, whether or not they wanted to. Right. You know, and they and that decided, can change. No, you know what? Exactly. Yeah. That, that can exactly. absolutely change. And that can be a decision you made with another partner and you guys have made that decision and maybe you're not with that partner. And then all of a sudden you change now, your mind and exactly. that is totally fine. Right. Um, right. That's totally fine. For sure. But like, instead of a pro and con list on this one, we just have some kind of like recounts, like from people who have talked yeah. about it and have lived it and have experienced it. Yeah. yeah so, sorry. So the first one we have is, um, she says, I think this was kind of a decision that we've made more than once. Like we were saying, you know, at the different times of your life, we've been together now 18 years. So I'd say once every five to six years, the topic comes up. And I think it'll probably stop coming up now, given our ages. One of us will say, so you want them now? And the other will say, no, no, not really. (laughs) Is anything going on that would make them want us, want them? No, no. (laughs) And that's from Robin. (laughs) That's so funny. Um, See, I mean, mean, they brought up a good point that that conversation does come up. And Mm -hmm. then they agree again. No. Exactly. Um, but it's good that they're communicating and checking in with each other in between. For sure. Like, that's good. Sure. 
Yeah. Um, the next one is, I think everybody could say that to get where we are and maintain our child-free status has been a constant decision-making process because every relationship you enter into, especially romantically, that's the expected thing. You're constantly making a decision about remaining child-free. So right. if, if you know that that's not for you, sometimes that's going to affect your dating life because right. you might get into a relationship with someone that you truly care about and they, they really want kids. You have to make that choice that, right. I'm sorry, this is something I've chosen for myself and we right. can't be together because of that. Our, which is, yeah. You know, we are, are, you know, what we see for ourselves don't line up and you know, right. sometimes that happens. Yeah. Um, other people, they make the decision because they've seen parenting or experienced parenting that wasn't great maybe. And they, you know, they didn't like it. So here's one. Um, I think part of it is as my friends started to have kids that made me go, Oh, I don't think this is for me <laughs> because even if I had one of kids before that, once they started having kids and losing their freedom and their individuality, that really was a big point for me. It was like, that does not look like fun. Uh, like the fun, happy family stuff that you think about when you're young. I think that was a big part when my friends started having kids. That was when I started thinking, I'm checking out of this. And for yep. sure, I've totally had um, friends say, look, I love my travel. I like to take trips every year, multiple trips a year. How am I going to do that with a baby? And it's true. And some people love traveling with their kids. I am right. not one of them. Traveling with my kids is a nightmare. But, yep. like, yeah, I can totally see how, you know, that that changes your perspective on things. Like, 100%. 100%. Yep. Um, the next one says, I was sort of observing families around me and wondering if I wanted to be a part of that dynamic in our world. A lot of people with children didn't look happy. The majority were definitely stressed out. There was something there that was not inviting me to participate in this lifestyle process. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I totally get it. I mean, honestly, honestly, I don't know how many times I look at Zach and go, why did we decide to have kids? In those moments of just pure stress and fr right. frustration, you go like, oh my gosh, because it is, it's hard. Now, being a parent now, I see like, for sure. Like for me personally, all of the pros outweigh the cons in terms of like the for stress. Sure. Yeah. But like, that's just how I perceive it for other exactly. people. That's, that's a choice the you've case. made just exactly. like the other exactly. choices are able to be made. I think we could exactly. just get into our listener stories. Let's do it. You good with I love it? the are listener you stories. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. You go first. Okay, fine. From the one and only. The one and only. <laughs> my love of my life. Every time she writes in, I go, I can't wait. I love you. Um, this is from Crystal. Um, so she says, so before I had a kid, I wanted five. I have always loved kids, which that's funny. Then I had one and I was a single mom since Landon was three months old. And I never wanted to do that again because it's hard as fuck. <laughs> Yeah. I might reconsider having more kids if I had a stable situation and partner, but as of right now, I am good with one. Also, Landon is almost a teenager, and the thought of starting over and getting no sleep triggers my anxiety. For yep. sure. <laughs> yep. I totally see that, Crystal. Totally, right. totally. Um, this is from Candace. Shout out, Candace. Hey, girl. Um, Hi, is, girl. She still with, is she still with Vaughn? Is that that's yeah. her? Yeah, oh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so she says, kids are grown as hell too. Like I anytime know, I see a picture, I'm so like, crazy. they're like mini adults as well. So, so crazy. Okay. Um, so Candace says, when my oldest son was born, he was the textbook definition of an easy baby, barely ever cried, great nurser, slept super well throughout the night. I was determined to have at least two or three more kids because I obviously had my mothering skills mastered. <laughs> so my husband and I tried for another one, it took a while, but it finally happened. And that child... <laughs> Came out full of sass, stubbornness, and uh, I'll do what I want attitude. <laughs> Did not sleep for more than three hours at a time. Would bite me to let me know he was done eating. Yes, with blood. Oh my God, girl, I'm sorry. And cried any time I set him down. There was a time I thought I had gotten in way over my head. I made the decision I was done. There was no way I could handle more. As the boys got older, the little firecracker has become a mini version of his mommy with a heart of gold. Aw. I'm so happy he's in our lives. 
My boys have grown up having a live-in best friend, and though they may fight, their love is so strong and beautiful. Now my boys are no longer little babies, and there's a part of me that will always wonder what it would have been like if I had had another one. But with the age gap, that's just not a thing. <laughs> so yeah. while one baby may be hard or easy, it doesn't always mean the others will be the same. This is so true. Um, the sibling bond can be a beautiful thing to watch and help to nurture. I say take it one baby at a time. Oh, that's such good advice. Yes. Take it one yes. baby at a time. But if yes. you feel like you've gotten, or if you feel like you've got more love to give, go for another one. Whatever you, you think you can handle, don't compare yourself to what others choose. Oh my God, yep. girl, love it. Yep. That was 100%. so well put. Yes. Send in more. Yes. <laughs> Send in more to us. more often. Oh my God, that was awesome. See, and I love when I post or like I put episodes together because you had no idea what you were reading and then you, I just, you feel it as you're reading it. It's awesome. I really do. I know. Yeah. I love that. Um. Next is from Ashley, Ashley, the OG. She said, I have two and that seems perfect to me. My husband and I tell them we won't always be here, but you will always have each other. Yes. I'm team sibling for sure. If you can, everyone has different circumstances, but you can physically, emotionally and financially. I say, do it. Give them a best friend or partner for life. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That is. I mean, that is one thing my mom that, always used to say to me. That. She always yeah. used to say, um, she would say, it's it's just the two of you. It will just be the two of you. She always used to yell that at me and my brother when we would fight. Um, Get that one. Should I read Lizzie's I'll now do that or one. do you want to wait to no. read it? Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. So this is from Diane, Diane. Um, one kid currently. I always wanted two or three kids and was trying for a second until my husband and I separated recently. While I would still love more kids, I have made peace with the fact that I may just have the one. Lucky for me, he's freaking awesome. Yes, he is. Yep. And all and all I need in this world. Oh, so cute. cute, so cute. He is the best. So I'll read that one. So our friend Lizzie, back from high school, she wrote. Mm -hmm. She had like wrote in, and she wrote something short. So she had said, "My hubby and I decided not to have littles." It just hasn't seemed to call us. So then I messaged her and I was like, can you write me more? Because I would yeah. like to elaborate and kind of say more on that. So she did. And this is what she had to say. Well, my choice to not have kids mostly comes from just no internal desire. I was a teacher for eight years and thought that I would have the urge to have kids, but it never came. As I get older, I have different priorities. I have four dogs that I love with all of my heart <laughs> and that keeps me plenty busy. When mm -hmm. I met my fiance, we talked about if we wanted kids, neither of us wanted to have kids. Growing up and in my early adult years, it seemed like the goal for a lot of folks, I knew where to find their person, settle down, and have kids. I thought I, want, I would want that too and spent a lot of time hearing, when you meet the one, you'll want to have a kid with mm -hmm. them. But deep down inside, I knew I didn't have any desire to have a kid. As I would, sorry. As I would be in relationships, my partners would want kids, but nothing in me wanted to go through pregnancy, let alone raise a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I see the amount of work, emotional energy, and money that it takes to have kids, and it's not for me. I have my person, I have my pack, and I'm very happy and feel fulfilled. Yes. I hope that makes sense and doesn't sound like I'm bashing having kids because no. that's not how I feel. That's, it I doesn't sound like no, that at exactly. all. For sure. And I love that she Absolutely. said pack. So you guys just like, she has huskies. She literally has a pack. She literally has four, like a pack yeah. of huskies. <laughs> right. I love it but so much. But just that last word of still being fulfilled. Fulfilled. That is such time. a big thing because it's your life. You choose yes. what you're going to do with it. It is a choice, right? And this is a choice she made, a choice they made together. And that's beautiful. And she mm -hmm. still feels in her heart completely fulfilled. And that's what, you know, people need to be more understanding. Because I, I do. I feel like some people are it's so, negative about it. There is a it. judgment. There's totally yeah. a judgment. And I love that. Like, she was told, oh, when you meet the right person, it'll yeah. change your mind. And then she met her person. And that person was also on the same right. wavelength. Which just meant, yeah. like, no, I met my person. And guess what? My, my decision is even more reinforced. And, and so I love that, that, that they were able to, you know, like she had that kind of already in her heart and then her person was able to like, 
you know, make that like a thing as well for her. So that's awesome. Yep. We have one more um, listener write in. So this says, my kids are eight years apart and it's a great age gap, but I wish my three-year-old had a sibling closer to her age to play with. I was not an only child and I could not imagine not having sibling. That That's me though. See, and again, like right. everyone's saying like, that's me though. And, or that's, you know, my decision. And that's, that's exactly what we're here to kind of show is that like everyone has a different look on it, whether you don't want kids, whether you want one, whether you want kids close in age, because there's, oh, we could go into all the pros and cons of having kids close versus having right. like spreading them out a bit. Right. And, and you know, whether you want two, three, five, like whatever yeah. it's, it really is. And I'm, I'm going to use Lizzie's words. What makes you fulfilled? And right. I'm also going to use like what else, like Candace said, take it one kid at a time and then just yeah. like talk, to yourself and your partner and work it out so that you feel, you know, you're in the right place because that's really what it comes down to. And be sure, I mean, I know it's hard because literally Zach and I got engaged. We weren't even married. We were engaged and people were already asking, when are you going to have kids? And then when we actually decided, okay, it's time to start trying to have kids and it took us a while to have kids, like we were hearing it all the time. And you know how hard yeah. that can be? So just a PSA, it's annoying. Yeah. like do Shut not up. ever... Shut the hell up. Shut up. Right. If someone wants to talk to you, if someone brings up the subject to you and yeah. it's an open conversation, go ahead and ask. Don't ever say, when are you having kids? Ask, do you want kids? With yeah. zero judgment. Because it can be a very sensitive subject for some people. You don't know that that person maybe, like you said, some people just couldn't have yeah. biological children. Right. And so you right. bringing it up and saying, when are you having kids? It's kind of insensitive. So yeah. PSA, yeah. just like watch the way that you say things and how you say back things off. to people <laughs> and back off and, and honestly, like understand that everyone's journey is different. And again, everyone is fulfilled in different ways. For and sure. that's beautiful. That's a beautiful, it is. beautiful thing. It is. It is real quick. So I just wanted to say that last one that sent it in, that was Amber. I don't mm -hmm. think we said the name. Maybe you did, oh, but I don't remember. I think I like, said it right at the very beginning. Maybe yeah. you did. Maybe you did. But I was I like, think I just you said it quickly. That <laughs> My bad. You probably did. But I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yes. Yeah, so know. the people that sent it in. Thank you. Thank we, you. That's always one of my favorite parts of everything. We got so many. Like we had such like a like variety. So like that yeah. was very good. Yep. That was awesome. Yep. And I'm glad we were able to share that. So I hope listener who originally asked the question, yeah, I Mariel, hope this thank you helps for that. you, you know, with kind of seeing different sides and different perspectives. Yeah, I hope so. And let us know, like, did this Make like you what change. thoughts did you end up having? <laughs> I was like, and if one time helped you make your decision, I you're welcome. <laughs> and you can name them. Head Rachel. Head Rachel. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so bad. You can name them. Well, I'm or if this has, if this episode has helped you realize you're right, I don't want kids. Go ahead and adopt a dog. Name it Head yes. Rachel. Head and, Rachel. You know, <laughs> we will love to hear about it. I gotta get a fish and name it head Rachel. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, thank you guys for being here. Um, happy Tuesday, happy whatever day it is. We love you as always. We and you. we will talk to you next week at wine time. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye.